the Japanese language. Odds are, if you're a fan of this channel, you've probably tried studying it at some point or another. And for some of you, maybe this has worked out. And for others, probably not so much. So, as with many other people on YouTube, I've decided to throw my two cents into the arena and showcase what works for me. Now, obviously, what works for me is not going to work for everybody else, and what works for you might not work for me. And that's just common sense. But I wanted to, in particular, showcase this certain book that I've recently purchased within the past few months that I think is really great for people that are beyond a certain point in their Japanese, but they're not quite there yet in terms of being fluent. So when I first took Japanese in my freshman year of college, I used the Genki books, an integrated course in elementary Japanese. There are two volumes of these books, as you can see, and they're really easy to follow, and these are a great starting point for people that are just starting out with the language. It really goes through all the basics, and it starts, obviously, assuming that you know absolutely nothing about the language. Um, these are great books. We did four chapters of these a uh, semester in, in school, and I believe there's 23 chapters total, so I think uh, the sophomore year we were somewhat in the second book. So, while these are great for starting out, uh, they're obviously not going to get you very far in terms of reading real Japanese, more on that later, because I think the total number of kanji in these books, yeah, 317. You're only going to learn 317 kanji by reading these, and as some of you may know, you need to know about, I think it's about 2,000, give or take, we'll just put it at that number, to be considered fluent and able to read, you know, the newspaper. So, this is going to give you the foundation, but it's not going to get you very far. So where do you go from there? Well, where I went from there was Japan itself. So after I'd gone through the first Genki book, and I think four chapters of the second one, I went to Japan for my junior year of college to study abroad. And I studied at Keio University, as most of you know if you've seen the Tokyo Swan Show. And at Keio they had a whole bunch of different textbooks for us to use. And these were really great, these were much more challenging than the Genki ones, they featured much more kanji. Uh, this was one I used in the spring semester. And let's see if we can just kind of showcase some of these. Here we go. Um, really, there's just tons and tons and tons. Mine are kind of water damaged uh, because of uh, the rainy season there, and it just soaked through my bag. I know, sad, right? So these textbooks that I used, they were really great. And as you can see uh, here, each lesson had just a ton of different kanji for each individual chapter. So we were learning a lot at a much quicker pace with these books. And so they worked really well, and they got me to the point where I could be really, really comfortable with the language. We learned, I think, about a thousand kanji overall. It was quite a lot uh, at the end of the year there. So here comes the tricky part. What do you do when you've reached that intermediate level and you know a lot of different kanji, you've been studying for a few years, you know a lot of different grammar points, but you still can't read a real book? Well, this is the main reason why I made this video, is I wanted to showcase this book that I purchased a few months ago that's really been helping me get back into studying and prepare myself to go back to Japan again, and that is Read Real Japanese Fiction. Now, this is a book that was brought out by Kodansha just last year, and it's got, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six short stories by six contemporary Japanese writers, and it has them with the... Japanese on one side of the page and the English on the other. Read Real Japanese is a terrific book if you want to read real Japanese, just as the title implies. Because I'm not knocking textbooks, but obviously the Japanese contained in them is going to be very structured and formalized, and it might not be how people actually talk or write in the real world. So, a book like this is great because it will introduce you to contemporary authors and contemporary writing that is more in tone with how writing actually appears in Japan. And the book is also great because when you're reading through it, each time a new kanji is introduced, you will get the reading for it. And you just look on the other side of the page to kind of match up, oh, okay, the potential translations. The book is set up like a traditional Japanese book. It's got the Japanese, it's read from right to left, and it also has a dictionary section in the back that goes over all the terms that appear throughout the six short stories, and a really helpful notes section that kind of goes through all the different grammar and sentence structures that you may or may not be familiar with. The book also includes a CD with someone narrating all the stories at a natural pace, so that was really good. So I highly recommend this to Japanese studiers who have gone through some of the textbooks, but they still just aren't over the mountain yet. They aren't at that point where they can read a real book. 
Um, certainly you have to put a lot of effort into this. This is not something you can just pick up and read and, and magically get the language. As with any language, you have to put so much time and effort into studying. But something like this makes it much more enjoyable. The writing is much more lively than textbook writing. And for that point, I think I'll move on to some other methods that may or may not work for you. Obviously, since I'm a fan of Japanese literature, uh, when I was in Japan, I liked to pick up some books and just read, you know, real books. This is going to be more challenging uh, because obviously these are all in Japanese and they're not going to have readings for all the kanji, so you're going to spend a lot of time in dictionaries. But um, for some, I mean, this is the best way to learn, and it's if you're really into books, then um, it's, it'll, it'll be the most enjoyable way. Uh, others, obviously aren't so much into into novels, so you might be more into manga, and uh, we've just got some Japanese manga here, so maybe you would prefer that. Um, this Haruhi one is actually pretty good because it has all the readings for all the kanjis, which I found kind of surprising. Um, so yeah, this also just got translated not too long ago, didn't it? But So there's definitely those options, uh, but getting a hold of these, you know, Japanese books might not be as easy in the States as, say, getting a hold of this bad boy. If you're going to try to start reading real Japanese, dictionaries are going to be your best friends. And they're going to come in two main varieties that are going to be helpful to you, the electronic dictionary and the big old school dictionary. I happen to have both, so let's take a look at what we have for these. So here's my big kanji dictionary and my denshi jisho, my electronic dictionary, and let's look at the electronic one first. So I bought this while I was in Japan. This is the Paprius, I think it is. It's from Sharp. Um, this, if you're going to get an electronic dictionary, make sure you get one that has the touch screen. Uh, that comes with a little stylus pen you can write on there. So uh, definitely, you probably want to invest in one of these if you get over to Japan. But it's not the only thing you're going to want because not everything is in these electronic dictionaries. And sometimes the old school big bad boys are just so much more comprehensive. Um, and this thing is a giant brick. It's the new Nelson Japanese English Character Dictionary. And there are just thousands upon thousands of kanji readings in here. And if you've never used a dictionary of this sort, it's based upon the radicals and the stroke order of how you would do them and how many strokes the radicals of the kanji have. So if you knew different parts of them, you would look up and they would correspond to different parts of this book. It sounds a little complicated at first, but once you do it a few times, it becomes really quick and easy. So this um, has been recommended to me by others, and it gets a pretty good rap online. So the New Nelson Japanese English Character Dictionary is probably the one you're going to want to get if you're really serious about going into translation or want to translate Japanese literature just for the heck of it. Another means that I've used to study Japanese, especially kanji, has been, well, believe it or not, Japanese video games, uh, especially for the Sega Saturn and Dreamcast. Here, for example, we've just got some different games, and for me, uh, ones that are really good, um, and ones that I was able to follow pretty much completely, were Tokimeki Memorial and Sentimental Graffiti on the Saturn. Um, these are known as visual novel type games. And, you know, you do a lot of reading and you make a lot of choices. So, those are great. Uh, Shenmue was another fun one since I had previously played through it in English, and then I played through it in Japanese. And uh, that was fantastic. So, yeah, tons of different ways to learn the language. So there you go. Those are different methods that have helped me read real Japanese over the years. And I think we've showcased a lot of different stuff that will help people of all different levels of where you're at with the Japanese language. So let me know what works for you guys and what doesn't work for you guys. I'm really curious uh, what styles, what techniques, what study aids do you guys have. Obviously, I use flashcards and uh, write stuff down a lot and just reading. Um, but... I don't know, I'm open to new ideas and I hope this has kind of given you guys a few new ideas. I really hope that some of you uh, go out and try to find this Read Real Japanese book. It's definitely worth the money and I think it'll really help people in that really strange intermediate place where you're good with the language, you can hold conversations, you're fine, but you're just not there yet where you can't get everything. So for that strange level, which I think is the most crucial in terms of learning the language, uh, this has been just amazing. Anyways, it's been fun, and as always, we'll see you next time.